Hello guys, for beginners in Laravel, when can you consider yourself a junior developer who would be able to get a job or apply for freelance jobs? In my Laravel roadmap on Laravel Daily Learning Roadmap, I have two milestones levels, beginner and junior developer, and those are different. Beginner is someone who can create a project for yourself, like a to-do list or hello world type of application, or personal blog. Junior developer is someone who is already useful for a client or for a company. So in this video, I will show you the updated demo project, simple CRM project challenge that you may take to create something like this, a simple CRM, which I consider to be enough knowledge to be able to apply for jobs. So this is the GitHub repository with the challenge. It's free, no membership required, with list of features I advise to implement and along the way to learn the skills required from Laravel. And at the end of this challenge repository, there is an example solution. So if you are a beginner or a junior, I would advise you to implement that yourself as a task for training and only then look at our solution, which looks like this. So projects, tasks, client, crud, nothing really fancy, but it contains quite a few details, which I will show in this video with parts of the code. So in this video, we will run through those features to implement and I will show you exactly the parts of the code of that project and also the full repository. Again, it's free on GitHub. The repository is here and you may take a look at more details and compare it to your solution if you had time to actually prepare that solution. And also maybe for beginners, it would be beneficial to put your version of that project on GitHub in your first portfolio to show to potential clients that you're capable of creating simple CRUD-based projects. So let's run through the features I suggest to implement in this project and what juniors developers should learn in my opinion and how they were implemented in this CRM. And some of them will be very fast, just one line. For others, it will be more complex. So route model binding in resource controllers means that in, for example, project controller we have show project with model and edit project with model instead of passing ID and doing find inside of the controller method. Laravel does that automatically for route resources, which are here in the routes file. Also, I'll quickly show you the line for route redirect to login form. On top, this is permanent redirect from home page to login if you want your application to be just login based without any public home page. The next is more complicated database seeders and factories. So let's take a look at database seeder file. In addition to roles and permissions, which we'll touch in a minute in this video, we have factories here. And this factory is similar to the original default factory from Laravel installation, but also we have custom factories like these for client, for project, and for task. So you need to learn how to call the factories in the seeders and how to create the factory in the definition, for example, fake methods. It's beneficial to have more than just fake string or fake text. Try to seed more realistic data. And in general, juniors should understand that factories and seeders are pretty important for two reasons. First, with factories, you can write automated tests easier to simulate some situation. And also for real clients, for real people who would test your project, it's beneficial to have some credentials to log in with and some data to test the feature as quickly as possible without thinking what to input and where to click. So this is kind of a side tip for presenting your work to the client. Seeders and factories help with that. Eloquent query scopes allow you to not repeat the conditions for Eloquent in multiple places or just offload the logic for some query condition in a separate method. So for example, in the project model here we have scope. This is a pretty new syntax option. So you don't have to have scope as a prefix of the model name of the method name, sorry. So filter status is the condition for when and where in the eloquent operation. And then in the controller, it is used like this filter status with parameter coming from request. 
The next point is polymorphic relations with Spidey Media Library package, and this is kind of two in one. By using Spidey Media Library package, you will see that it uses polymorphic relationships under the hood in the database. So if you take a look at database structure of the media table that comes with Spidey Media Library package, this is the thing model type and model ID, those are polymorphic relationships columns. And in general, you need to get familiar with Spidey Media Library. So to implement that in Eloquent model, you have implement has media, you have interacts with media. And then in this project, we have separate media controller, which can be used in multiple CRUDs to store the file and attach it to some media collection or to download the file or to destroy the file. So you need to get familiar with stuff like add media and other methods from Spidey Media Library to be able to upload files like this in the form. The next point, eloquent accessors and mutators. And here I may show a few examples. So for the user model, we have attribute to construct the full name from first and last names. Also in the client model, we have company name to get the uppercase first letter for the value. And also you may experiment yourself to add the values to transform them to format and from format that you want. And also soft deletes on eloquent models. This is kind of a beginner level topic. So in here, for example, for client model, we have use soft deletes and deleted at in the migrations. So the data would be not wiped out accidentally, especially for junior developers, they may make silly mistakes in the code. So soft deletes is kind of a protection against accidental data wiping. The next topic is roles and permissions, admin and simple users. And in this CRM, it's very basic with just two permissions. Let me show you in the database header again. You saw that already you have only two permissions, manage users and delete. And those would be assigned only to admin user role. And then for example, in the controller for task controller, there is no check for create and edit and others. It's allowed for all users, but in the destroy, we have this abort if you can use policies, you can add checks in the controllers here for every method that depends on the project. But in this case, we're just checking if the role has that permission with gates and under the hood that gate denies will call the spicy Laravel permission package logic. So this is delete for all the CRUDs for all the projects and tasks and everything. And there's a separate permission to manage users, which is used globally in the routes web here, one of the controllers, as you can see, this is another syntax and another way to check by role, restricting all the controller methods and inside of that controller, then you don't need to check the gates or permissions at all. If you want to see more complex scenarios, I have a separate course on Laravel daily Rosalind permissions in Laravel 12 text and video course with simple case of admin and user areas and then much more complex case with teams and clinics and owners and patients and more stuff. I will link that course in the description below. Now let's get back to this list, authentication, email verification. This is kind of a built in feature in Laravel. So after the registration, the new user would need to verify their email and to protect the routes or route group, all you need to do is middleware verified. And then it automatically checks the middleware automatically checks whether that email verified at for users is filled in. The next topic is API totally needed for all the developers, juniors or not juniors. So API routes and controllers, it looks like this. We have routes API file with controller specifically in the API namespace client controller with just one method for demonstration that returns the paginated list of clients using API resource. This is another topic here, eloquent API resources, how to transform the data. In this case, it wasn't even changed actually, but if you want to not return some fields, or for example, we didn't return the created ad and updated ad in this case, or maybe transform or combine some address, this is where you would put it generally. And also keep in mind, since Laravel 11 API is installable thing, by default, Laravel will not contain API and there's a command PHP artisan install API. Then the next subtopic is auth with Sanctum, which is also installed with that PHP artisan install API command. And then all you need to do is add middleware auth Sanctum to your routes. To explain what it actually does, it requires a separate video. You can read more details in the Laravel Sanctum documentation. And the final point with API override error handling in status code. And since Laravel 11, this thing comes in bootstrap app file. So with exceptions, for example, here, I override the not found HTTP exception with another response that resource you're looking was not 
found. This is an example with API, but in general, this is how you override the exceptions in Laravel 11 and 12. Next, what juniors need to learn is try catch and Laravel exceptions. And the example here is a bit silly, actually. This is a demo project, but we're trying try catch and there may be a query exception, database exception. And in this case, the query exception is related to task being deleted, but it belongs to project which still exists. And this is then the error. Instead of doing that, you can, of course, check before destroying, for example, if there is a project, then redirect even before trying to delete. Or like in this case, you can catch the query exception instead. If you want to find out more about exceptions, I also have a course about that in Laravel Daily. Very quick one, updated to Laravel 12, but in text version, only 30 minutes read about how to catch exceptions, how to create and why to create your own one also PHP errors and handling exceptions in Laravel 12. The next point in the list is customizing error pages and we didn't implement that in this project. So you would have in resources views errors folder, but in this case, I will show Laravel docs for that. So in the error handling error pages documentation, you can just create resources views errors. And for example, 404 blade PHP, which can be totally custom to your project, or you can do vendor publish Laravel errors. And then those blade files would be created automatically, which you can then customize with changing some text or more details. Next, two more topics to go. So sending emails, I will actually show both in one example. In the task controller store method, we have these two lines. So after the task is created, we need to notify some user. And in this case, for demonstration, we're doing that in two different syntax options. So task assigned is a notification, general Laravel notification, which you can use to return via database or via email. In this case, it's to array and we're using database notifications, but this would be the example of sending email or SMS message or Slack notification or something else. There are a lot of drivers here. And also another option, mail to and mail task assigned is mailable where you define this is relatively new syntax since Laravel 10, I think. There's envelope for the subject. There's content for markdown with some variables that come through constructor here. And I think a mistake here since we're using public with property promotion, we don't need to do this. So yeah, this is how you send emails in Laravel. And of course, they need to be configured in the .env file and in the config mail file, depending on the driver and the service you choose to send emails. And finally, automated test for CRUD operations. Again, I get back to the point that juniors may make mistakes and automated tests would be the actual final frontier to protect them or to find bugs earlier than the code is shipped to production. So in this case, I will show you one test example, project controller destroy test, testing that with permission, it works well. So user without delete permission cannot delete a project. So creating the users, it's called a range. So there are three phases in most of test methods. A range is setting up the scenario, then act is actually making the action of for example, delete route and then assert. The third step is assert what happens after that action is performed. So this is just one example of automated tests in this project. So yeah, this is kind of a quick overview, jumping through those features and showing the code in a quick way. You can dive deeper. The repository is free on GitHub and the link will be in the description below. And if you notice any issues that we may improve in that repo, open the issues or comment below. And in my opinion, if you're capable to create a project like this, you already can consider yourself as a junior valuable to the company or to potential freelance clients who may order similar simple CRMs. What do you think? Any skill I missed that would be beneficial for junior developers to get their first jobs? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.